Here's the rest of my interview with Donna and Jimmy Nolan about the murder of their son, Michael, a star baseball player from Yonkers who was drafted by the Oakland A's. The community in Yonkers has rallied around your family. This kid had so much going for him, and he gave back so much to, to Yonkers, you know? And, and let me tell you, the people in Yonkers, it, between... Oh, Everybody. All of them. From when they heard about it, I'll never forget. Somebody called me at like 6 o'clock. They seen on the news. I was like, oh, God. So once it started hitting the news, and then all of his friends now, they're, they're calling and they're texting, and who, the, who's coming, you know, to the hospital? And it was just... That whole weekend, just a vigil, there had to be, they estimated at least 2,000 people. I'm proud to say I, I lived in Yonkers because everybody honored Michael. I mean, we had the Yankees honored him at Yankee Stadium when the Oakland A's came, you know. That was very emotional. <sighs> Those guys would have loved the man. You know, I think to myself. His dream was just to pitch at Yankee Stadium, man. He was th almost there. Donna, you said before that you don't move on from this, but you, you have to m move. You have to get up in the morning. How do you do that? You have to move forward. You know, you get up every morning, and every night I say the same thing to him. I said, well, we got to do another day, kid. And I tell him I love him. And I just ask him, you know, watch over your brothers tonight, you know. And then when I get up in the morning, I'll ask him, all right, well, he has another day. Got to give me the strength. And some days, like, I feel like he is giving me the strength. And then there's other days where it's just like, I don't want to do this no more. I love my son. And yet that's never going to happen. I never get to see my son again. And it's sickening, like when you go to court, it's like Michael don't have rights anymore. The people who murdered my son has rights. And it, it makes, you, makes you sick. What would be justice for Michael if you were able to call the shots? All of them should just be in jail for what they did. But even in being in jail, like, that's not, you know, everybody goes, well, you got justice. How? How is that justice for me? I still, we still as a family have to deal every day, like I said, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, how do we, m like, move forward or, or make that attempt to move forward and, and try and have a I, I don't even, you can't even say a normal life. You change. I'm not that person that I was on September 17, 2015. A part of my life was taken from me. This was my son, and he was taken from me. Do you think your family will ever find peace? I don't know. His I honestly don't know. Michael, I've been asked that yeah. before, and I can't, yeah. I can't say yes, but I can't say no, because I don't know. They say time gets better. And I don't no, know what's in store tomorrow. Know. I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what this afternoon. I mean, you know, you could have a good afternoon. I could have. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I get it in the morning. She gets it at night. I hate. The she nighttime. don't sleep. I hate the, ever since the I hospital. Hate, I hate the nighttime. I, we did everything right. Did everything right. Never thought we would ever get a call. It's like yesterday, in my mind, and it'll be like that for the rest of my life. Heartbroken. Nothing's ever going to change my situation. I mean, I never get my son back. I never get to see him get married. I never get to have grandchildren. I never get to do that mom and son dance. And he always used to tease me about that. We're not dancing to a slow song, Mom. We're going to dance. But yet they robbed me of all of that. They took that from me. And. It's horrible. I, I, like, I know he's gone, but I can't accept him being gone. Like, I still think that he's away at school and he's going to call me, and yet that phone call's not coming in, you know? And when I do that bed check at night to make sure everybody's home and everything else, there's always that empty bed. There's always that empty chair at the table. There's always that smack right in my face that he's gone. 
Michael's organs were donated, and that saved six lives. His parents have also set up a scholarship in his name. Thanks, Karen. Up next, our Hudson Valley headlines.